Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Jacqueline. I'm a third grade teacher and I just finished my first year of teaching. In this video, I wanna share with you guys a handful of books, or maybe more than a handful of books, that you should have in your classroom. These are children books that I love so dearly. And even if you're not a teacher, um, maybe if you're a mom or a dad and you're watching this video, you should have these books in your house. Um, so the books that I have here, a lot of them I read when I was in college. I had to take this class that was called Children Literature. And taking that class, I fell in love with books and we just learned so much about diversity and why we need to have books in our classrooms that represent every student in our class. Some of them are just so raw and they're children books for a reason, which means there are children that could relate to these books, all of them. So I'm just gonna go through a few, and I hope that you guys consider buying some of these books either on Amazon or at your local bookstore or something like that. So let's get into it. This book is called Max. It's by Rachel Isadora and it's pretty much about a little boy. He's in a baseball uniform, but he loves to dance. He loves ballet, and he doesn't think ballet is just for girls. So I love that. Just knowing like dancing isn't just for girls, it's for boys too. And we had a lot of great conversations with that book because girls could even say baseball isn't just for boys. So that's a good one. The next book is called A Day's Work. I love this book. I just read it to David yesterday and I choked up. It's so good. If you can look at the illustrations and the characters, it's a Hispanic grandfather and his grandson. The grandfather just moved to the US and he's looking for job opportunities, but he doesn't know English, so that's why his grandson is with him. And it just has such a great ending to it and it's all about being honest and being someone of integrity so definitely read this book this is the reality of a lot of people there were so many times where i had to like stop and stop myself from crying because it's so good and it's so honest and definitely worth having in your home or your classroom <sighs> this book you guys i cannot read it without crying literally it's called Fly Away Home, and it's about a dad and a boy, and they are homeless, and they live in the airport. Now, I have never heard about homeless people living in the airport, but it's a thing. It's a real thing, and it's really sad because this is reality. It is a children book for a reason, meaning there are children in this world that can relate to this book. So they pretty much live in the airport, and they, they're they pretty much trying to get by without getting caught. So like the dad goes to work throughout the day and the son stays at the airport with another homeless family and pretty much the dad is looking for work so that's why he goes out um, during the day and a little boy actually carries like luggages for like old people in the airport for some change. So that's, how, so they're both getting some money and Pretty much he's hoping one day that he doesn't have to live in the airport anymore and I love this book I read it to my students once because I just can't like I towards the end I started to choke up and I'm like oh my gosh this is embarrassing I'm literally about to just cry in front of my students um, but yeah this is a great book definitely get that um, this book is a famous one it's called chrysanthemum and that's her name and a lot of people make fun of her and then she ends up hating her name and I mean I can speak into that because I did not always love my name and I don't know if you watched my other video where I talk about my name a little bit and how there was like this one teacher when I was in elementary school and she would pronounce my name like this Jacqueline <laughs> and I would hate it and I ended up hating my name for so long in middle school I went by the name Jackie because Jacqueline just sounded so ugly to me and then 
when I was in middle school, being called Jackie sometimes would remind me of Jackie Chan or people would remind me of Jackie Chan. And then I just started to hate Jackie. So then when I went to high school, I went back to Jacqueline. And so now everyone calls me all kinds of things. But now I love my name. And Chrysanthemum ends up loving her name at the end of the book, which is so sweet. And so yeah, a lot of people can relate to that book. This book is called Your Move by Eve Bunting. If you haven't noticed, some of these other books that I've already shown you were from Eve Bunting. And these are about two little boys. Um, they're brothers. Mom goes out at night to go work. And this older brother um, gets this kind of opportunity to join a gang. And he takes his little brother along with him and they are introduced to a gun and a lot of other raw stuff and this book is so good because it is the reality of a lot of kids or a lot of teenagers and so anyways they get introduced to that to a young age and at the end you know something happens and <laughs> it's so sad but at the end they decide not to join the gang and the gang gets angry, but anyways, they decide not to join. I know some of you think maybe that's too much to read to your student, or that's too much to read to your child, but it's not. <laughs> One day they're going to learn about what a gang is. One day they will be curious. It's called your move because they end up making a really good move, which is they decide not to join because um, it's not worth it. So anyways, read this book, it's so good. Um, and there are students who can relate to this book. I'll read you guys the intro right here, it says, the K-Bones are not a gang or a crew, they say. They're just a bunch of guys who get together to have some fun. Like a club, James wants to have fun with them and he's willing to prove himself to get into the group. So James and his little brother Isaac are watching out the window, waiting until they're sure their mother is on the bus and off to work. Tonight is the night. So yeah, it's a really good book and it's raw and it's real and your kids should read this. And this one, more than half your kids will understand this book in my classroom. I think I had about four students who actually had parents that were not divorced and the rest were either their parents were never together or um, they're going through a divorce and that breaks my heart, but it is more than common in our world today. So this book is called Monday, Wednesday and Every Other Weekend and it's about a boy, like in the beginning he's saying, well I have two rooms. Um, I have two houses and he's naming the perks of having divorced parents, but um, he reveals his true feelings and his heart in this story and um, he stumbles upon the house that he used to live in when his parents were together when they were one big happy family and how he really feels about it. And this is a really good book um, to open up a conversation to your students. Um, I think y'all would have really good conversations with this book because a lot of them will be able to relate. So, definitely read that one. These next two books are interactive books, so you read a page, it's called What Should Danny Do? What Should Darla Do? Boy version, girl version. And pretty much it gives you scenarios of this little boy and his day and your student or your child is supposed to tell you what he should do and according to their answer you flip to that page but if they tell you he should do something else you flip to that other page so it's a pretty cool interactive book and you know it doesn't you don't have to read this book at once you know you could do a couple of scenarios a day and it's really cute. I bought these books the weekend before COVID and I ordered them off Amazon. And by the time I got it, school was shut down. So it sucks I didn't get to do these with my students, but I'm sure it would have been awesome. This one is a really fun book. It's called The Tooth Fairy. I'm sure a lot of you have read it, but it's about this girl who lost her tooth and the tooth fairy is like, okay, give me your tooth. And she's like, but. <laughs> And so it's really cool because it's also interactive. So it has like 
letters from the Tooth Fairy and her back and forth. And the Tooth Fairy is trying to convince her, like, I need your tooth. And the girl is like, wait, but I have more questions. And it's just about a girl's curiosity towards the Tooth Fairy. So it's really fun. My kids loved it and they loved all the envelopes that they got to open up. Um, this book is called I Like Myself. And it's so cute. I read this to David yesterday. Should I read it? Okay, I'm going to read it. <laughs> it says, I like myself. I'm glad I'm me. There's no one else I'd rather be. I like my eyes, my ears, my nose. I like my fingers and my toes. I like me wild. I like me tame. I like me different and the same. I like me fast. I like me slow. I like me everywhere I go. I like me on the inside too for all I think and say and do. Inside, outside, upside down, from head to toe and all around. I like it all. It all is me and me is all I want to be. And I don't care in any way what, any, what someone else may think or say. She's so cute. <gasps> I may be called a silly nut or a crazy cuckoo bird. So what? I'm having too much fun, you see, for anything to bother me. This is really what I look like when I wake up. Even when I look a mess, I still don't look. I still don't like me any less. Because nothing in this world, you know, can change what's deep inside. And so, no matter if they stop and stare, no person ever, anywhere, can make me feel that what they see is all there really is to me. I'd still like me with fleas or warts or with a silly snout Ooh, that snores. Or knobby knees or hippo hips or purple polka dotted lips. Or yikes with spikes all down my spine or hair that's like a porcupine. I still would be the same, you see? I like myself because I'm me. I love it, it's so sweet. And then the next two books are The First Day Jitters. I told you guys all about this one in another one of my videos and it's a really sweet book to read on your first day of school. Um, pretty much about this girl who's nervous to go to school and yada 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 at the end of the book. It's not a little girl, it's actually the teacher. <laughs> so that's really cool that the students could realize you're a person that gets nervous too, just like they do. And it's a really good way to connect with them on the first day of school. And then the last book is called All Are Welcome Here. I also told you guys about this one in my other video. And it's kids of all kinds. And yeah, it's pretty much just letting your students know that they're all welcomed in your classroom and in your school. And it's cute. It shows a lot of like families of different kinds. Like this is her leaving school, I mean her house to go to school. This is them going to school. So yeah, it shows them that everyone's different, but they're all welcomed. So anyways, these are a lot of great books. I'll definitely link them um, in the description below. And I hope that you guys consider getting these books in your classrooms or in your house. Um, and yeah, I hope that you guys find this video helpful and enjoyable. And if you did, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. I'll see you guys later.